All right, welcome back to the new battery in the microphone. Um, next speaker, Steve from the GDG Bremen uh, uh, Cloud, uh, yeah, Cloud Person GPU, he's going to talk about uh, the Google Push notification. That's our next talk before the lunch break. Uh, then the lunch will take place, as we will say, later uh, in the main day. All right, welcome, Steve. Hello everyone, um, my name is Steve, as Jerome already told. Um, I'm going to tell you something about uh, Google's push notification service. It's called uh, Google Cloud Messaging. Um, I used it in some of my smaller projects. Um, and you can see that it's not the same for, for Android and for Chrome. Um, I will tell you that later. Um, first about, about me, I'm a student at the University of Applied Science in Bremen, doing my master thesis uh, at the moment. Uh, I'm working for a company named uh, Neuster Software Development, um, and I'm also part of the Hackerspace in Bremen and organizing the Google Development Group in Bremen. I did a lot of talks um, about Google App Engine, Google Cloud Messaging. And actually, this one is the third one about Google Cloud Messaging. You can find the slides already online. Uh, just scan this QR code or type in the, the URL. There are several links in it uh, after each, each chapter of the slides. Uh, I've put some re uh, related links for you so you can, deep, uh, can get uh, deeper into the technology. Um, yes, uh, my goal uh, today is to give you answers. Answers about several questions. Um, what is Google Cloud Messaging? Uh, why um, do I have to use put something like push notifications? What is it good for? Um, how does GCM work? And um, mostly, I think, um, the most of you are developers. Uh, how can I implement it? Then I have a uh, question, what comes next? It's about some new features uh, I want to tell you about. And also, what are the alternatives? Um, as this title says, um, Google Cloud Messaging is only a push notification for Chrome and Android. So if you want to support uh, other platforms like iOS or Windows Phone or um, yeah, uh, PhoneGap uh, applications or something, then there are several alternatives. I will name them at the end. Okay, forgot the animations again. Okay, um, what is Google Cloud Messaging? As I said, it's a push notification service. Um, you can send small lightweighted uh, messages from your third party application I would, um, or your yeah, server um, to an Android app. Sorry, it's a button this slide. Um, to your Android app, your Chrome extension, or your Chrome app. Um, it was previously known as C2DM, uh, Cloud to Device Messaging. Um, I think it was last year they renamed it and did a lot of um, stuff to the API of Google Cloud Messaging. And uh, last year they introduced uh, GCM for Chrome. Um, often in my slides you will find those little icons at the, at the top there, an Android and a Chrome, um, because sometimes I switch a lot between those both technologies. Um, you have to understand that GCM is for Android and Chrome, it's both called Google Cloud Messaging, but the APIs are different and the workflows some some are different. Um, you can reuse some some of the code, but um, sometimes a little bit of pain. Um, you see there the API. Um, the client doesn't uh, your your Android app doesn't need to be running uh, if you send a push notification from your server. Um, so the handling. Um, what happens if my, my app is offline, if my user is offline, um, will be done by the, by the servers, uh, service. And then it works um, as following. Um, you send a message from your server to the Google Cloud Messaging server. This holds the message until the, your, the device or the user is online again, and then sends it over the, the play services um, to your device. Um, you need Android 2.2 and the Google Play Store um, to use Google Cloud Messaging. And um, below Android 4.0, um, your user has, uh, has, oh, needs a um, Google account. Uh, above 
4.0, that's no problem, no Google account is needed there. Um, Android is free, um, you can send as many messages as you want. Um, the only thing you have to uh, check is the maximum payload, I'll come to that later. Okay, let's come to Chrome, it's a lot different, it's not free, you have a quota of 10,000 uh, API calls uh, a day. Um, it's not like Android you can use um, only a device or a Google account is not needed above 4.0. Um, in Chrome you need to, your user needs to be signed in. So it's kind of uh, a message for your user, to all devices of your user. In GCM for Android you can um, get, uh, you can send a, a message to every device um, your user has um, separately. So it's not connected to the user. Um, also the client doesn't need to be running and as you see here uh, the API is different. I don't know uh, what happens um, behind the API, if there are several things in common, but uh, it's, a lot of, it, it's a lot more work for, for the developer who's uh, implementing the server implementation because you have to do both um, things, you have to use it like two APIs. <coughs> okay, let's come to the, to the functionalities you have. You have, first of all, so-called messages with payload, that's, as I said, a lightweight message. Um, okay. um, and with Chrome you have a maximum payload length of 256 bytes with, if you use it, Google Cloud Messaging for Android, for kilobytes, I don't know why, um, but yeah, maybe um, they put them together some someday. And uh, you have to know that every message of this kind will be delivered. So just take an example. Um, we are developing an app or an extension or whatever for um, soccer games. So I favor a soccer game and I want to get noticed when, when um, a goal is, is scored. So um, I send a notification for goal 1, goal 2, goal 3 and all of them come to the device uh, and get displayed for example in a notification after each other. So um, if you Think about uh, a tablet you use two uh, two two week you doesn't uh, use two weeks. So you come back on and all of those messages um, for your favorite I don't know um, um, club will be delivered. So you have a ton of messages. So that's why uh, Android has sent to sync messages. There you can collapse uh, messages. For example, you give a so-called collapse key. Um, to your message or attach it to your message and all of the messages uh, who will be sent to the device will um, uh, will not automatically be sent if the device comes back online again but uh, only the last one so um, so like this you can only say okay the, the score of, of this this match was 3-0 uh, and not uh, you, and you don't uh, get all the messages about goal 1, goal 2 etc. Um, this uh, functionality is only for, for Android. And the next uh, interesting thing is user notifications. As I said, um, if you use Google Cloud Messaging for Chrome, um, you have this kind of functionality. You, all, your, all your extensions for one user um, get the messages you send. So you have to send, it, send the message only once. Uh, Android is implementing it um, now. Um, there's an experimental phase at the moment, so you can sign in for that. And then uh, maybe maybe seen that uh, watching the Google I/O. And then, um, for example, if you dismiss a notification of one of your device, all of the other devices gets uh, gets noticed, and you can dismiss them too. Um, so it's it's attached to the to the user, not to the device. For Android, we see that uh, a little bit detail uh, when we get to the workflow. Okay, and another new uh, feature only for Android and also experimental uh, is upstream messaging. So you cannot only push messages from your server to your Android app, but you can also um, push me messages back from your Android device to the server. Anyone knows or could, could think of a reason uh, to use that? I, I, I needed some, some time uh, also. 
Um, it was uh, the the thing I thought about was the maintenance. If you have a server in maintenance for I think two hours or something, all all your apps, uh, ex Chrome extensions or whatever, um, they cannot send any messages to your to your server. Uh, and if you use Google Cloud Messaging for uh, pushing from the device to your server, you can um, the the app is um, still uh, you can still use your app. Um, all your changes will be sent to the Google Cloud Messaging service, and after the, your server comes back online again, it gets all the messages. Uh, yeah, it uses um, so-called CCS. It's a new Google Cloud Messaging server. Um, we'll come to that later. Okay, as I told, some related links. Uh, here are the uh, documentations for Android and for the Google Chrome, uh, Google Cloud Messaging for Chrome. Um, the first documentation for Android is pretty good. The Chrome one, not that good. Um, but um, I've, I've created a little, a little example uh, application you can view um, after. So why use push notifications? First of all, because of battery. Uh, if I have an uh, Android app, and all of the time I'm, I'm requesting data, checking, hey, is there something new? And always my server says no. Um, then you have to uh, get your your app has to be run running all the time in the background. That's um, not good for your battery. That's not good for system your system resources, and uh, you don't want any user reviews saying, "Oh, um, your your app uh, drains my battery," or "Why does your app need so much uh, RAM?" Something. And only uh, and also it uh, takes you away the pain of handling offline devices. What about a device which comes online after? after after uh, some days, some month, um, you have to, you need to have a strategy on the server how to get your your data uh, or how to give the data to your device or otherwise on the other hand side, um, your device needs a strategy to get new data and uh, what about versions of of your server, etc. So either way, uh, it's more code and with Google Cloud Messaging with push notifications, you. Um, don't need that much code and uh, the handling will be done by the service. Okay, now to the inter interesting stuff. How does Google Cloud Messaging uh, work? Last year I did a, um, a little talk at the bar camp at DevFest Berlin and uh, the, um, all of them said, told me that too much, I had too much text so I commented them out and created some pictures um, on my own. <laughs> so. They're not that good. Um, just check out the, the Android there. Um, we, we have four steps. Um, the first one is my Android has to, uh, my Android device, my app has to do um, enable Google Cloud Messaging. Um, then um, my server can send messages uh, to my device. Uh, after that, um, my device receives the, receives the message in different ways for Chrome and Android. And the fourth one, the one hopefully nobody wants, but it happens, so you have to implement it, is uh, an app wants to unregister from your push notifications. So let's start with the step one. Um, enable Google Cloud Messaging. First, your Android device uh, requests a so-called registration ID. For each device, um, you get a re registration ID. It, doesn't, uh, it isn't connected to your user or something. Uh, the Google Cloud Messaging Server uh, gives, a, gives this uh, registration ID to the, to the device and then the device sends this to, the, to your server. You can add additional data. For example, I've created, um, I've always sent the user email to my um, server so I can put, um, yeah, connect them with my, with my logic on the server. But you could also uh, just send the registration ID to the server. Okay, for Chrome it is a little bit different. You don't need uh, to request the registration ID, you request the user channel ID. So the workflow is the same. Um, the, your Chrome extension, your Chrome app requests the user channel ID, it gets it. This, is, uh, this, this ID is always the same for all, uh, for all your devices of, of one user. And then this is sent to the, to the server with yeah, additional data if you want. Step two, um, you want to send a message to, um, to your device, a goal was scored or something, 
Then um, your server um, takes the registration ID it has stored from the device, um, takes an API key, um, you get that from the Google Cloud Console, and yeah, the message you want to send, obviously, sends this, all those three things to the Google Cloud Messaging Server. This is a HTTPC, HTTPC, HTTP server. And um, in case the uh, device is online, it uh, directly sends the message to the device. Otherwise, uh, it holds the message and I uh, think about um, some days uh, to check out how long. But um, it holds this, uh, this message um, and send it, sends it later. Okay, if Chrome, uh, if you use Chrome, it's a little bit different. You first have to ex uh, get an access token. So you don't have an API key uh, from the console. You have to get the access to use this service. Um, there, uh, you use OAuth 2 for that. Um, and with this access token and the message, um, and the user channel ID, oh, sorry, I forgot that, um, you send this to the Google Cloud Messenger, uh, Google Cloud Messaging server, and uh, this server sends all of the sends the one message to all of the devices with the same user channel ID. Okay, this one have, doesn't have the user channel ID X Y Z, so it doesn't get the message. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of text. I'm sorry for that. I couldn't uh, uh, paint <laughs> something for it. Um, if you get the message on Android, um, your Play Service receive, receive um, the message and broad, uh, throw a broadcast intent, uh, which must be uh, received by your, um, by your application. And then you can do whatever you want. You don't have to throw a notification. You can also just um, say, like, for example, um, I want to, to fetch some data from the, from the server or whatever. So you can also use the, me the messages only as an Indian identity, uh, uh, like an indicator that uh, there's new data available on the server. With Chrome, it's a little bit easier. You have a Chrome listener. Um, you have to install it in the app or in the extension. Um, this one is called by the system, and then um, you can handle your notification. OK, step four. The one uh, you don't want, but you have to implement it. Um, the registration process. Um, if you use it with Android, you could all only say, okay, unregister, unregister me at the server, and then the server don't send any messages to those registration ID. Um, but it is recommended to unregister with a Google Cloud Messaging server. Um, you send an unregister intent uh, actually only to your Google Play service. And uh, this communicates with Google Cloud Messaging server. You get an um, yeah, uh, okay or error back. When you get an OK, you can unregister from, from the server, and that's the way that happens. With Chrome, you don't have to communicate with the Google Cloud Messaging server. Um, you just have to toggle your server unregister me, and that's all. OK. If you want to see uh, more, uh, if you want to read more about um, the workflows, about how you send your data and stuff, um, go to Architectural Overview of Google Cloud Messaging for Android or the client version for GCM for Chrome. Okay, what does it need to get to get it running? First of all, um, you have to create a cloud project. Um, how, um, how many of you have used the Google Cloud Console? Okay, it's, it's new. Um, before there was um, the App Engine dashboard and the API Console, both of them still exist. Uh, but the new one, which is getting all of them together, all the APIs and all the Google Cloud Platform services and products, is the Cloud Console. So you will see only screenshots from from the Cloud Console here. You can um, you can create a, a Google Cloud project. Mine was called Dragon Doctor uh, minus GCM, and then you can uh, use some. APIs, and I choose here Google Cloud Messaging for Android and for Chrome to turn on. Okay, next one. 
you have to register a web application in the Cloud Console. That sounds a little bit, a uh, little bit odd, but it's pretty easy. Just go to registered app here, apps here, create a new one, and and you get asked, okay, um, for what do do I have to create one? And that's for web application, uh, which this OAuth2 client ID will be used afterwards for uh, my uh, Android API. For Chrome it's similar, it's just not a web application, it's a Chrome application, so uh, you get different um, credentials here. Okay, let's come to code. Um, if you're using um, Java on the back end, um, you can use um, JARs, which are um, delivered in the in the Android SDK or uh, delivered with the Android SDK or you can add a dependency using Maven. There's no official dependency from Google. It's uh, one created by um, yeah, nickname Slogger. Um, you have to add a repository, a GitHub repository and add this Maven dependency. If you're doing that for Chrome, um, you can add the OAuth2 OAuth client libraries um, but there's no official library for Google Cloud Messaging um, for Java, so you have to use the simple HTTP request. The documentation tells you how to access um, your uh, the Google Cloud Messaging server. And um, this is the same thing you have to do for all other um, um, languages. For example, if I want to do uh, Python on my backend, uh, I have to use this HTTP requests for connecting to Google Cloud Messaging um, server to the Google Cloud Messaging um, API of Chrome and Android. Um, yeah. Okay, next one, send messages, that's what we want to do. Um, on, I will show the server side implementation with Java. Um, if you have questions on how to do it on other languages, come to me later. Uh, maybe I can give you a hint where to look that up. Um, first of all, um, on the server side, I have several registration IDs for for Android now, for my uh, all the devices um, who want to receive notifications, and um, those are here. Then I create a new sender with a with an API key that I get from the Google Cloud Console, and build uh, a message with the payload, and if I want a collapse key. Uh, as I said before, if I add a collapse key, uh, all the messages with the same collapse key get um, yeah, collapsed, so I only get the last message. And then I send, send this to all of the registration IDs. Um, to implement on the client side, you have to do a lot more. Um, you have to um, change, make, make some enhancements to your Android manifest. XML, um, stuff like, okay, you need internet permission, um, you need a permission to access a C2D message, that's uh, from the former uh, cloud, uh, cloud to device messaging API that hasn't changed yet, and um, if you're using um, an application which also is for Android, uh, below Android 4.0, you need this get account and a wake clock to wake up your application in case you receive a message. To also, the manifest needs a receiver and a service um, to yeah, receive your, uh, the, the messages and the registration uh, intents. Um, how do I register? If my app starts the first time, or um, yeah, with my app starts, I can um, call this function register check some, some uh, details about, about Google Cloud Messaging, and if I don't have a reg uh, registration ID, I can um, request a new one. Uh, I get this like that. After that, I have to send, um, after I did that, um, I'll, the system comes back to me um, after that is finished with over this intent service here. Um, if it's on the if the unregistered um, method is called, I can um, send my registration ID to my third application server. And there are also um, two other mes uh, two other methods on message. If I get a message, um, that's how I get the payload. 
and the on unregistered is just uh, if I'm unre unregistering because I don't want to receive any notifications. Um, on Chrome, it's a little bit different. You don't have an Android manifest XML, uh, but you have a manifest.json. You just put uh, push messaging in there. Notifications is not needed, but I put it there because um, yeah, it's a good use case. Um, and you have to, uh, you need access to your to your server. So that's how, uh, how you put it, and that's it on the manifest side. And uh, to use it, you um, have to use this little code. Just um, the first thing is here uh, when your your yeah, app or extension is launched. Um, you need to access the channel ID, it's just this one call. And after that happens, we call the channel ID callback message uh, method, um, where we add an, a listener, um, what happened, uh, which is called when the message is received later on. And after that, we register at the server, so we just do an Ajax, Ajax call, uh, Ajax post call uh, to our server and send send it our user channel. Um, here's the method message received. That's called when, when um, a message comes in. Um, I just implemented notification here. You could also do something else, change uh, code in your, um, your um, pop-up HTML or something. And that's it. I haven't shown you the unregistration stuff and so on. So if you want to look that up, I've created an application um, called GCM example, uh, where I put in Google App Engine Java um, server application with, which uses Google Cloud Messaging for Android and for Chrome uh, in there. And I also added a client for Chrome and uh, uh, Android implementation. So if you want to look that up, there are several to-dos in there. So uh, I, I will uh, try to get them uh, implemented as soon as possible. The Android application works at the moment. I have issues with the Chrome extension. Uh, I will see that uh, if I fix this this uh, weekend. If you have any uh, succession, uh, um, if you want to contribute to it, just do a push request or um, call an is uh, issue uh, in the GitHub repository. Okay, what comes next? As I told, there are two experimental features at the moment. Um, the first one is uh, user notifications. You've seen a similar picture for Chrome, um, for Chrome extensions and, and apps. Um, at the moment, this feature is, uh, can be used by some developers. I tried to uh, get, a, uh, get access for the GCM example application, but um, uh, didn't get any answer yet. If, in case um, they get me, uh, they give me access to the new features. I will implement it also in the repository. Um, okay, um, how does it work? Okay, we have don't now have don't have the registration ID sent to the GCM server. We have a notification key. The handling of the notification key must be done by uh, by your server. So what happens? Your um, your app has to send an additional information like, sorry, um, like um, um, what user do I belong to or what group do I belong to to your server. Um, then the server has to put all the, of the registration IDs about um, from this user um, together as a group and send an information to the GCM server. Hey, uh, uh, I have several reg uh, registration IDs. Um, I want them to be grouped. Uh, sent me a notification key. After that is done, I can do this workflow. I have the notification key for several registration IDs. Send this to the GCM server with the API key and the message. And uh, the GCM server knows, OK, uh, for this uh, notification uh, key, I have several registration IDs. And they are sent to the, to the uh, apps of the user. So we have different registration IDs still on the Android device, but they're connected over one notification key. That's going to come soon, hopefully, for um, 
as a non-experimental, as a stable function, GCM. And also the upstream messaging, as I told, is um, to push a message from your Android device to uh, the, your server. So um, this uses a different kind of um, GCM server, it's called CCS. Um, you don't have an HTTP server like uh, we did before with, uh, with the other functionalities. It's a, a persistent TCP connection you have between uh, all of those three parties and they're uh, sending XMPP messages from bi bidirectional from uh, Android device to GCM, from GCM to um, your server and the other way around. Okay, um, there, are some, uh, there are some links about this, uh, user notification and GCM cloud connection server. As I said, if you want to test this out, uh, you, there are also some, uh, there's also a link about uh, the form you can, um, you can ex uh, get your access to that functionality. As soon as I get that, um, it will be found, uh, or an example will be found in the GitHub repository. Okay. So that's for Google Cloud Messaging. Um, Google doesn't have, is, doesn't, uh, isn't the only um, provider who uh, gives you access to a push notification service. There are several others. You could say, okay, um, I'm pulling uh, in a regular interval my, uh, my server. Please don't do that. <laughs> it's it's uh, bad design, it uses more battery as I told. Uh, it uses more of your system resources, especially if you have, uh, have devices for uh, older devices, they, they use, they, um, their users don't like stuff like that, so use push notifications for small lightweight messages, and it's more to code if you use uh, regular intervals. Alternatives on other platforms are, um, for example, Apple push notification service. Um, I've got an application for the hackerspace in Bremen um, on GitHub, where you can see how to implement um, APNS um, uh, on your server uh, with Java. I like Java, sorry. <laughs> and um, hopefully soon we have Microsoft push notification service there too. Um, okay, with, with APNS, I think all of you know it's for iOS, uh, Mac OS, etc. Microsoft push notifications and Windows push notifications I uh, haven't used one of them yet, but I think Windows is only for Windows phones and uh, the Windows um, RT things, and Microsoft push notifications also for others. Correct me on that, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, and you can also use other alternatives. Um, as I said, Google Cloud Messaging is, is bound to, uh, to the Google Play service, so if you uh, Creating an application for for uh, another web, uh, another app store, Amazon App Store or something similar. Um, you could also use something like Amazon Simple Notification Service. This isn't bound to to uh, store. And you could also use, uh, for example, if you're using PhoneGap, PushShip. Um, that's a, I think a plugin. Yeah. There are also some hybrids. You can use, um, for example, if you're um, using, using Cordova or, or PhoneGap, you can use the gener generic push plugin. Um, this one uses GCM and APNS, and there are a lot of other um, services you can use, but most of them are um, commercial, so you have to pay for them. Yeah. Thanks for your attention. Um, Hopefully, I could answer all the questions I had at, at the beginning, and uh, if you have questions now, um, um, I'll give you an answer, hopefully. Yeah, Thank you. Questions? Hi. Um, Hi, Stefan. <laughs> Hi, Steve. <laughs> You mentioned that the messages are um, restricted to 4 kilobytes for Android and 256 bytes for Chrome. Chrome. What if I want, as a server, want to send a message which is larger than that? It sounds quite reasonable. Okay, the thing you can do is uh, just tell your ex extension, okay, I will 
more data than just those small messages for you, um, come to me. Just make a request and get the data from me. So in this way, you don't have to do it uh, in a regular interval, but you can um, just tell your application that it needs more data from the server and it has to do a request. That's the way I would do it. I see. So basically, it's really just a notification server that allows your application to then interact with the server for example. Yeah. For example. You, you were talking about uh, Chrome, app, Chrome apps and Android apps. If I want to do this kind of communication with a plain JavaScript application, uh, what alternatives do you know of uh, to do this kind of, of work? I don't know if I understand. What, um, you, you mean if you're doing on a, a JavaScript on Android or? Yeah, normal JavaScript in the browser, not, okay. not necessarily Chrome, for example. Ah, OK. Um, you could use the Amazon SNS. Um, I think it has a JavaScript implementation too. Other so. questions? Um, is it possible on Android to send a broadcast message to all registered uh, devices? What do you mean to to send? Message from Android to uh, from the client to the client. So uh, no, uh, from from the server to all requested devices. So yeah, you can you can uh, especially for Android. You have um, that the example I showed was um, like a batch uh, messaging. You can send uh, one message to only one device, but you can also send it to a list of devices to registration IDs. You could also um, use the same. Um, the same uh, credentials on several apps, for example. So like this, um, if someone wants to create a new app um, who gets also the notification that uh, your goal was scored, you can um, use the same, the same, uh, the same um, keys there as you use in, in the other Android applications and then both of them get the, um, the messages. I must provide all key keys, so if I have uh, one million registered devices, I must send one million keys to yeah. Uh, Google. Yeah. yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, um, as you mentioned, um, other alternatives to the messaging, do you also um, check out something like an MQTT or something self-hosted? No, not yet. I, I've, I've just used APNS um, before. Uh, I've checked some, I just, um, the most I checked were, as I said, commercial, if you have multiple um, APIs who are used, um, especially if you want to search for alternatives for, for Android, the most, uh, or many APIs there, or many services there, use the GCM behind that, so. No, I haven't, haven't used that before. Last call for questions. All right, so we say a big thank you again to Steve. That is lunch. Uh, lunch is being served uh, on the other side. We will have an afternoon of uh, open discussion. Uh, open for startup and data store with Nacho, uh, the Java Original Network uh, for Java developers. And, uh,